per usual, this is one of my off-the-cuff video things. No dialogue planned or anything, so bear with me. I've purchased the Sure Feed feeders by Sure Flap. I'm not advertising them or promoting them at this point. Maybe later on I will. I've had them in action now for about 10 days. We're still in training mode with the kitties. And I'm going to just give you an overview of what I've learned about them so far. Then later on, perhaps we'll have a more detailed review of what I think of them overall. Here's the issue here with me. I've got 10 cats. Here comes one now. This is Simbicon. He's very fluffy, but I think he's a little bit overweight. And I have two other cats, Gypsy Rose and Kalahari, who need to uh, certainly not gain any more weight. On the raw diet, it's actually fairly easy for the cats to maintain their weight and not become overweight, all of, but there are exceptions. So how do you feed 10 cats? If you're all feeding them the same, if you're feeding them all the same diet, and you need to make sure the little ones get enough food, but the ones that are getting slightly overweight are not consuming too much food. So this is uh, the solution that I'm going to try. I have no idea if I'm going to be successful. This would also be an excellent solution for anyone who has different cats on different diets. That's not the case with me. I'm simply trying to feed the little ones as much as they want and the big ones I would like to limit their diet a little bit. So they'll eat as a group per usual a limited amount and then additional food will be available in the feeders for those who do not have the habit of overeating. Okay, so I've got a red dot on one and that's just so that I can program it differently if I want to and know which one I'm, I'm talking about, which one I'm programming. Right now, they are both programmed for all of the seven cats that I'm going to allow the extra food. It's kind of a nice little gizmo here. It runs on four C batteries, which are inserted in the bottom of the unit. The large button on the back opens and closes the door so that you can insert the food and then close the flap back over it. The middle button is for programming the unit. It programs in their microchips. And Simbicon, yours is not going to be programmed in. So when you're programming in your cats, you've got to make sure that ones who are not supposed to be programming in are nowhere near the feeder because you don't want to accidentally program in a cat that you don't want programmed. In order to change the program, you have to pretty much wipe it. There's a factory reset in the directions and how you do that. Or you can just take the batteries out, put them back in again. Yes, I understand it. I'm still learning this machine. But in order to program a cat in, it's really quite easy. I've got seven of them programmed in already with no problems. You simply turn it on and it starts blinking and it is in program mode. And as soon as the cat comes in, sticks his face in here, her face, then the light goes on steady. And that means that the cat has been programmed into the machine. And it will either stop when one has been programmed in or if I push the button again, to terminate the program sequence. So I put goodies in or food in and I just waited until the ones that I wanted to be programmed in had their face in there and then I pushed the button and had them programmed in rather nicely. This third button is for the training mode. And the first training mode is number one. And that flap is completely open. Anybody can eat out of it, approved cat or not. The flap doesn't move. 
you just get them used to sticking their head in and out and eating in a, in a different environment than what they were before. Some kind of being a nuisance. Okay, the next training mode, that could take, um, oh, I had it on that for a couple of days. Then, that's not the button I want to push. Sumacan, you're distracting me. Okay, here's the next training mode. The door opens and closes just the tiniest, tiniest bit. Just to get them used to the sound and a slight movement. Each machine comes with a small tag which you can put on a collar to activate it. The sensors for the microchips and the tags are two on each side of here, which you have to keep clean. You can set the door. It's on the center. I have it on the fast setting, actually. We'll set it on the middle setting, uh, where it closes and opens really fast, or just medium fast, or you can have it very slow. For example, if you have a timid cat um, who dithers around, it will stay open for the cat until the cat walks fully away. You like that in the con? It's taking longer for it to make, make its movement. Now, the next phase, this is the current state of the, the training phase that the kitties are in now. And everybody but Mariah seems to be okay with it because they have to push their heads in right into the dish almost to get it to activate. Unless they have a tag. I'm getting a couple more tags so that I can put them around their necks. It opens faster with the tag than it does with the microchip, probably because it's hanging underneath their neck rather than in the middle of their shoulder blades. But that's the face it's on now. There it goes, close again. Then the next step, I'll probably have them on this for maybe, I don't know, a few more days or a week. We'll see. Here's the next one. Now it's almost over the bowl, which means Simicon and the other kitties, you're not the non-approved kitties, you're not going to be able to get your paws in there. You're not going to get your paws in there and steal food. No, when it gets that far over, our program is in force. That's right. And it takes about five, ten seconds maybe after the cat's left. It does seem to vary too, I mean, depending on how the cat approaches it. I've ha seen it activate when a uh, kitty with a tag around her neck, it just kind of walks by. So there's some vari variable there as far as its activation. You notice that the light goes green whenever an approved cat comes in. That means that cat's been programmed in. And then this is going to be the, this is the last phase we're actually done. Once they get to that point, then they're done with the training phase and it should open and close it's normally. Like a soul. Just a word on the lights. Green is showing solid when a cat is approved, is programmed in and has its head in there. Blinking green means it's ready to be programmed. And the orange light is indicating it's in a training phase. I am now in the third. See, it's blinking three times, three times, then off, three times, then off. And that means that the lid is that far over. If it's blinking one, we're in the training phase where the lid is completely open. If it blinks twice, the lid is just tiny little bit over one quarter inch or so. And then uh, the next step, we will have four it goes over. When it blinks four, it will be the next stop, which will be almost all the way over the bowl. Then we'll be done and ready to proceed. Cleaning the feeder seems to be fairly straightforward and not too difficult. It's got a little lock here to unlock and lift the lid. 
out of the feeder so you can wipe both sides of it and you can clean down in here. I do see potential issues with things getting gummed up in the little worker work area here. Other than that, and possibly up here behind the lid, other than that, it looks fairly easy. It's got a mat here that just pulls out. I suppose you could even leave it out. You can buy different colors and spare bowls and all of that kind of stuff. It comes with a bowl. Uh, it comes with two bowls. One has a divider in it so that you can put wet on one side and dry on the other, I'm assuming. When you're done, if you put the lid, lid or flap back on, make sure it's folded over the little arms so that it will open and close as it's supposed to, and then lock it. And the other thing that you have to pay attention to is to make sure that the sensors are clean so that it can pick up the microchips. I think this is kind of a clever a machine, it's going to take the kitties, um, well, you know, it hasn't taken that long, basically. It depends on how motivated they are. For fancy feast or treats, they're really motivated. If they're not that hungry, they're not that motivated. So, anyway, we'll have some future, hopefully a future review of this once they're full and well trained, and I'll be weighing, particularly Simicon, on a monthly basis, and hopefully we can have a nice slow weight drop with him and then determine how much to feed so that he maintains his weight.